Hello, it's Dr. Ronald Lett from the Canadian Network for International Surgery. We are starting a series on postpartum hemorrhage. We will follow the traditional four T's, tone, tissue, tear, and thrombin. We will have a lesson on tone, on uterine atony, the use of massage, and uterotonics. Tissue, retain placenta, we will have a lesson on that. Tear, we will have a lesson on perineal tears. Thrombin, we will not have a lesson on that because that's just a matter of missing clotting factors and those just need volume replacement or replacement with blood or plasma. Before we get into the four T's, we're going to do lesson one, which is venous access and volume replacement. For all the types of postpartum hemorrhage, we need venous access. What's the purpose of venous access? One is for medication. Two is for standby in case there's a problem with more severe hemorrhage. And thirdly is to provide fluids when there is a severe hemorrhage. Venous access is gained by a catheter or a needle. They vary in size. 16 is large and very useful, 18 is large enough, 20 is getting too small. The shorter the catheter, the faster the blood will go in. So you want a short, wide board catheter. Volume. Volume replacement means putting in fluids. Saline or Ringer's lactate are the most useful ones and the ones that you will have available. Volume also includes blood, but that's often not available at the time you need it. So postpartum hemorrhage, you'll need to remember the four T's, but for all cases, you need venous access and be prepared to give volume replacement. We will now have a demonstration on how to get venous access so that you can replace volume. So I'd like to demonstrate how do you get venous access. We'll start with a human arm. You can see some veins on the dorsum of the, her hand here, but they're not very visible. What you do is you put a tourniquet on. That blocks the venous return. And then you stimulate the vein and you can see that it becomes quite visible. So this is how you are able to get venous access on the human being by blocking it with a tourniquet and stimulating it by slight tapping above the vein. We have replaced the human arm with a mannequin as it's not really ethical to be poking somebody when they don't have any benefit from that needle. The tourniquet is in place, the vein is distended. I'm now wearing gloves. We prepare the skin with an alcohol swab. I have an 18 gauge needle. It's big enough to give fluids. 16 is better, but a little bit more difficult to put in place and quite painful. 20 is too small to get enough fluids in in a patient that's hemorrhaging. I take the needle. I see the vein is well distended. I look for the bevel in the needle. I hold the patient's hand. I enter the vein. Then I slide the catheter into the vein over the needle. I put my finger on there to control the bleeding. We reduce the pressure by taking off the tourniquet. I then take the cap and put it in place, which prevents bleeding until you get the intravenous tubing in place. It's important to secure the vein, the intravenous well. I put an X over there to hold it in place. Put another one in place here. 
We now have a well-secured line, which is important for the patient's life. We then would uncap it and add the intravenous catheter for volume replacement. So this skill is something that every midwife should know so that they can give fluid replacement and medication and if necessary blood to a patient with postpartum hemorrhage. Thank you for watching and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and be sure to subscribe and like us on YouTube. If you would like more information about CNIS or on how to become our member, please go to www.cnis.ca.